بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his countless favors and nikmat he has bestowed upon us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us of the Eid that has passed us by. We you know, cease to be in this month here of the Hijjah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in it. Here at Masjid Dar al-Arqam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yassara li al-ziyara ila al-ihibba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It made it possible for me to visit my beloved brothers here at this blessed Masjid. فَإِنْشَاءَ نَتَذَاكَرُ فِيمَا يَسْرُهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Remind ourselves with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes possible. The time that we live in, in brothers, is a time of fitting. Naam. Time of fitting, of temptations, and things that pull you to the haram, and things are obscure, things are not clear. Naam. It's a time where the halal and the haram sometimes amongst many people is not clear. Naam. And that which is truthful, and that which is falseful, and who's truthful, and who's a liar, and who's trustworthy, and who, what is the sunnah. The things upon what is sunnah, what is not sunnah. People these days, they do the haram, bismis sunnah. Nah. They do the in the name of the sunnah, it's not from the sunnah. It's not from the sunnah. Nah. And it's aware for us, it's aware upon us, it's upon us to be aware of these matters and hold fast to our deen. And it, it takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. Nah. And the fitting they come from these temptations and urges and drives and impulses and things that come to us and confuse us, they come from all kinds of directions. All kinds of directions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul Wattaku fitnatan la tusiban lalladhina zalamu minkum khasa wa'lamu anna Allah shadeed al-iqab Wattaku fitnah be aware, be on guard for the fitna. La tusibanna alladheena zalamu. It's not as fitna that is afflicted upon the people of ma'asi, even the righteous. From kathratil fitn, from the abundance of fitna, even the righteous are afflicted by it and fall into it. La tusibanna alladheena zalamu minkum khasa. It doesn't afflict the oppressive minkum from amongst you all specifically. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابِ And that Allah is a vain punishment. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about these fitin. And when we listen to these ahadith that we look at tonight, maybe we can recognize what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about. It comes from al-Musnad of Imam Ahmed, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مِنْ حَدِيثِ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهِ أَنِ النَّبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قَالْ سَتَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ سُنُونَ Khadda'ah Sata'ati ala nas sunun Khadda'ah Is going to come Amongst people Years of deception Trickery Yukadbu fiha sadiq Or yusaddiq fiha al-kadir Yukadbu fiha sadiq The one who's a liar Is going to be made truthful Naam Wa yusaddiq fiha al-kadir Wa yukadbu fiha sadiq And the one who's truthful They're going to say he's a liar نعم ويؤتمن فيها الخائن ويخون فيها الأمين The one who is a betrayer and is not trustworthy is going to be considered trustworthy and the one who's trustworthy is going to be considered that he's, uh, he's, he has betrayal with him and he has deception ويمطق فيها الروي بضا and during that time the ones who's going to be speaking are the الروي بضا قالوا قيل وما الرويبضة يا رسول الله they said what is this الرويبضة يا رسول الله قال السفيه يتكلم في أمر العامة it's an ignorant person speaking about the general affairs of the people now what's halal what's haram what's permissible what you should do what you shouldn't do somebody who's safi somebody who hasn't studied and doesn't know and these are the times that has opposed us. Now, the people of, of, of lies and trickery 
have been known to be the ones who are truthful and the people, those are the people that people turn to and look to and take their information from. Even from amongst us, from amongst the Muslims, the ones that people turn to for fatawa and for ilm and for knowledge, unfortunately in the time that we live in, are the people that are not qualified for it. Now, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, as it comes from the hadith of Zainab bin Tujahshin, qalat, dakhala alayya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fazi'an yaqulu waylun lil'arab min fitnatin aw min sharrin qalik tarab. She said, Zainab bin Tujahshin, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she's the Prophet's wife, radiallahu anha, the Prophet entered upon me, fazi'an, shak, na'am, saying, waylun lil'arab, wo upon the Arab. This is something that you say when something surprising happens. From evil that has approached. I mean, this is the time that evil is coming. Yeah. He said, it has been opened today from the barrier that's keeping Ya'juj or Ma'juj back in, in the area, a little crack has been opened and he put his fingers together between the thumb and the one that comes after it. Qalit Zainab, قلت يا رسول الله أن نهلك وفينا الصالحون قال نعم إذا كثر الخبث She said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, are we going to be destroyed and amongst us righteous people? We have righteousness, we have classless, we have masajid, we have khay. Prophet said, yes, if there is a lot of abundance of khabath Khabath means Fusuq Wa ma'asi Wa al-fasad Sins, disobedience, corruption Naam But there are hadith kathira That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He says it comes from the hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu La tukum musa'a Hatta Yakthur Al-zina Wa yakthur Shurb al-khamr وَيَقْثُرْ الْفِتْنِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الْحَدِيثِ That the hour is not going to come in the Yawm Al-Qiyamah until there is a bunch, there's abundance of fornication. And that's no doubt the time that we're in. Uh, look at, it's not just fornication now, and that was homosexuality, and wives, and movies, and TVs, and, and all kinds of things, and language, and all kinds of fawahish. That is in abundance. That's in abundance. Now sometimes... It comes to you and you're not looking for it. Sometimes it comes to you and you don't have to go to it. Now, with the fitna that we have from the phones and the fitna that we have from the internet, it's a great, great fitna. The fitna of the, of the internet and that, what they plan from it and what is intended from it is extreme. It's beyond what we imagine. Now, and its effect, its effect on people and its effect on youth, its effects on youth and the addiction that is that comes with it. Naam. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, sallam is warned from. It comes from the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala yataqarabu az-zaman and at that time is going to yataqarab, is going to be shortened. It comes in another hadith and the Prophet explained this. He said yataqarabu az-zaman hatta yakun السنة كالشهر والشهر كالجمعة والجمعة كاليوم واليوم كالساعة والساعة كاحتراق السعفة الخوصة فافت اكسوين يتقارب الزمان meaning the time is going to be shortened نعم the, 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 the stuff the things that used to be able to get done in a period of time now is shortened it's no baraka in time until like a year it's like a month in a month, it's like a week. And a week is like a day. And a day is like an hour. And the hour is like the burning up of a sa'fa, al khawsa. A sa'fa. These are the leaves that's on the date palm tree. When they become dry, the people, when they want to start a fire, they like these leaves. Naam. They call it a sa'fa, or al khawsa. And they light very quickly. They light very quickly in order to start off. The other uh, pieces of wood in there and get it lit. Going back to the first hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Yataqarabu al-zaman wa yulqa al-shuh wa tazharu al-fitn wa yakthur al-haraj." Qaru wa ma haraj Rasulullah qala al-qatl al-qatl. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال يتقارب الزمان The time is going to be shortened. Now, I'm, you're not going to benefit from the day and from the time, from the umr. The time that we live in, somebody might be 20 years old, 25 years old, can't drive, never got a driver's license, never graduated, 35 years old, not married, can't do this, can't do that, not capable, incapable, ages, kaslan. Now, he's a grown man in his body. Now, I'm. وكان شيخنا كان يمزح شيخ يحيى يقول طوله نخلة وعقله سخلة. You know that he has the height of a date palm tree and he has the intellect of a sheep of a goat. نعم. And this is the time that we live in. نعم. That people they don't benefit from time. نعم. ويلقى الشح. And this is that greed is going to be thrown into the hearts of mankind. Meaning people, and shuh is different from bukhul. Bukhul is just to be cheap and hold on to your money. But shuh is when somebody wants to hold on and is eager of that which is not theirs. It's not even theirs. Nah. You've seen people in the time that we live, hadith ala al naam, on stealing, what nahab, Sticking people up and taking their money, haris alehi, as if they owned it, as if they have the right to it, naam? as if it's something you tenafis alehi, like it's something that you compete for. And before, when the people were bukul, they were competing for their own wealth, with their own money, with their own time, not spending it, keeping it, naam? But now we live in a time where people are haris. For other people's money to the point of death. They are willing to sacrifice their own lives. How many times in the time that we live in, so many people are armed. So many people who have stores, so many people have property are armed. So people come to rob them, and most of the times, they lose out. Now, I'm meaning they sacrifice their lives to rob somebody... If they rob them, what is he going to have? What is this guy going to have in his pocket? Thirty dollars, forty dollars. What do you think this guy coming out of the subway? He's not. He's not driving a car. He's coming out of a subway. What do you think you're going to benefit from him if you got away? Nah, but this is the shuh, and this is the greed that has entered into the hearts of people. Why tazharu fitan? And fitan is going to be in abundance. And fitan is in all kinds. In the time that we live in, in the affairs of dunya, but unfortunately also in the affairs of religion. Now, you will be surprised of the things that the people do in the name of the sunnah, in the name of deen. The way that the people get married today, a lot of them is totally in contradiction and against and in opposition to what Allah and His Messenger have legislated. Particularly this thing that they call a sit down. Where if somebody's interested in a woman, in a sister, he goes sit down with her and he asks her questions. Where she's from, what color she likes, what football team she likes, what's her best basketball team, and what's her this, and what's that, and what food she likes, and what kind of food she likes. Now I'm a total stranger. Now I'm, and they're trying to see if they're compatible, as if it's Apple or if it's Android, that kind of compatibility. But this is not how marriage is done. And we have a dilemma here in America with marriages. And this is done alaniya. This is done openly. Some of them have this on their flyers, on their announcement. There's going to be an opportunity for brothers to sit down and get to know one another. Yeah, subhanAllah. Min ayyideen. This is Islam. This is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have no choice. You can't do what you want to do. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions are free. Bura'a. They're free from that totally. Nah, they're free from that totally. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَيَكْثَرُ الْحَرَجْ He said, there's going to be a lot of haraj. They said, what is haraj? He said, killing. And that is no time. That is no doubt the time that unfortunately we have reached. We have reached a time that there's nothing like it that has proceeded from before. If you look at the population of people in prison, 
America has a quarter of the population of the world in prison. All of the people in the world, a quarter percentage of it is in America. How many, the Sual is for y'all, New York State, how many correctional facilities do you think is in New York State? Cool. Yeah, Bashir. How many correctional facilities do you think is in New York State? How many prisons? Come sit in New York. Yeah, I'm Ahmed. Come sit in New York. Yeah, I'm Ahmed. Come sit in New York. New York here in Tajid, we have 62 counties, so Kula County here is 52. 52. 52 correctional facilities. 52. 52. If name will come soon. 52 is Sijin. 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 Nah. In New York by itself, in New York. Nah. Alaf, Alaf, Alaf. Nah. And we want to read the hadith that reminds me of the situation. A lot of the reasons why people are in Sijin is connected to drugs, selling drugs, using drugs, everything that's centered around that. Now, a quarter, a quarter of the world's population, or you mean a quarter of, of the world's population? Then you're, you're talking about nearly almost a, a billion point five. Uh, uh, no, of, of Sijin, the people in Sijin, the people that's in prison. Right, but here in the United States, they have a quarter of it. America is all 300 million. Just for correction. And him, that's, that's what the statistics say. Okay. So, out of all the people in prison in the world, the prisoners, the criminals that are incarcerated, nah, okay. the people incarcerated, nah, a quarter of the people incarcerated in the world is just in America by itself. Nah. A lot of it because of drugs. What You ever heard of somebody is a retired thief. I stole all my life and now I retired. I'm not going to steal anymore. Mm-hmm. You ever go, you get killed or you go to jail. You ever tired with drug dealer, I, I, I've sold and now I'm, I, I wrap it up, I'm finished. No. You either go to jail or you get killed. There's no third solution. Nah. It comes from the hadith of Abi Huraira of the Sahihain and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال يحصروا عن فرات جبل من ذهب يقتتل الناس على فرات is بحر يحصر and this بحر this river in it is a mountain of gold يحصر عنه يكشف عنه it appears the water goes away it decreases in this river in this ocean فيظهر it appears in it جبل من ذهب is a mountain of gold People go to get the gold, but they have to fight over it. They have to fight over it. For yuktalu min kulli mi'a tis'atun wa tis'un. From every 100 people, 99 get killed. For yakulu kullu rajunun minhum la'alli an akuna ana ladi anju. For each one of them, of these 100 people say, Perhaps I'm going to be the one that saves. I'm going to be the one that safe is not killed. Is this a situation with drugs? Soon as somebody gets shot on the corner or arrested on the corner, they find a stupid one to take his place. And soon as he gets killed and he gets or in prison, they find somebody just like him to take his place. And he thinks he's going to be the one. Nah. In another narration, the Prophet sallallahu says, "Yakshifu an yakshifu an furat kenzin kenzun min dahabin fa man hadruhu fa la yaakhud minhu shay'a." It's soon to come that I'm kenzin. Treasures of dahab are going to appear in this river of furat. Whoever attends it doesn't take anything from it. Why they don't take anything from it? They get killed. <laughs> they get killed. Naam. <laughs> At the beginning of the hadith, I don't know if I mentioned this, La taqum musa'a. La taqum musa'a. The sa'a, the yawm al qiyam is not going to come hatta yuhsaru an furat 
Jabalun min dahab. The sa'a is not going to come until it appears in this ocean of Furad, naam, a mountain of gold. Yaqtatilu nas alayh. The people are going to be fighting over. Fayuqtalu min kulli mi'a tis'atun wa tis'un. From every 100 people, 99 people are going to be killed. وَيَقُولُ كُلُّ رَجُلٍ مِّنْهُمْ لَعَلِّي أَنَّ كُنْ عَنَ الَّذِي أَنْجُوا Every single one of them they, What kind of himam? What kind of low desires that they have? That they're willing to risk their life They see that the people are getting killed and killed And he still thinks, well perhaps I'm going to be the one that get paid I'm going to be the one that makes it now, And this unfortunately These are the sad times that we live in from the strange things that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned and that he said لا تقوم الساعة حتى يمر الرجو بالقبر يقول ليتني مكانك the hour is not going to come until the man goes, behind, goes past he walks past a grave and he says only if I was in his place and he yeah. desires to be dead in another narration the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال لا تذهب الدنيا لا تذهب الدنيا حتى يمرج على القبر فيتمرغ فيه يقول ليتني مكان صاحب هذا القبر ليس به الدين ما به إلا البلاء هكذا قد يقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم this dunya is not going to end. And that a person goes past a grave. He gets on the floor and rolls around in the dirt. And gets the dirt all over him. And says, if only I was in the place of this person here in his grave. The prophet said, he doesn't have any deen with him. It's not because he has a lot of iman. He only has a lot of fitna, bala, trials, tribulations, hardships. Now, if we looked at the suicide rate now, um, here in America, forget anywhere else. Forget anywhere else. Now, people who are in the prime of their youth, in ages like 24 to 35, 18 to 30, committing suicide. Okay, what's the problem? Sadiqati tarakatsni. My girlfriend, she doesn't want to be with me anymore. And his girlfriend, that's a Zania, that she's a, she's a fornicator. She's not even a, 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 he didn't get what he wanted to get from these worldly affairs. Taraqamat alayhi al fitan. The fitan has overcome him. In the time that we're living in, we as Muslims have to be aware of these things. Naam. Fil and we want to, every time, it's easy, it's easy to identify sometimes a fitna. Look over there, that's no good. That's bad. Look what he said. Look what he did. Look at the problems of the Muslims here. But who's going to have the solutions? Aish al hal. Naam. We're here in America. Aish al hal. Naam. That where you might try to take care of your children here and your family, but as soon as you leave your house, now I'm in the midst of fitting. And unfortunately with these phones, you're in the midst of fitting. And it's very important. And if you only knew that the children do not need phones that have internet, it is a haru. Nah. That's very khatir. They give children with phones with internet. Because the internet is designed for addiction. Particularly Facebook, and YouTube, and Twitter, and it is designed for addiction. You don't pay for all the ads that come up. You don't pay for each one. You don't pay. Who's paying for it? The, the commercials that are coming on there. And they're paying in YouTube, and they're paying Facebook to keep your face right there. That's what they're paying for. <laughs> they are paying them to keep your face glued to it. Well, some of them out of defense, disbelievers. The ones who worked in Facebook and he was the director and he was the programmer, their children has no social media. Their children. 
Microsoft CEO. Mm-hmm. And it's not healthy to give. He doesn't give his kids to have his nah. father. Some of them, they don't enter in the bedroom. They said one, the most thing, the one of the things that you can do is turn off your notifications. And as soon as something comes to you, it goes, eh, eh, the sound comes off on your phone. Bam, ah, uh, ah, uh, bang, bang. Nah. And you turn to the phone, and you turn to the phone, and you turn to the phone. You realize you just knock it and turn to the phone. When you turn that off, you're going to find comfort. Yeah. You're going to find comfort. So much so that sometimes you might be on WhatsApp and you're writing, somebody might send them a message. When you send them this message, you see up top it says typing. They only put that there to keep your face in this phone. They, 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 you, 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 they just do that. They, their job. Somebody goes, he has a store. He goes to the warehouse and he buys food. The food is the, pro- is the product. In the internet, you are the product. You're the product. Nah, they're paying them to keep you glued. Nah, so they said recording, such and such. And while you watching that, another message comes to you from the email. You got a sound from the email. You got a sound from this. You get a sound from that. Nah. So it's good to turn off your notifications. The social media, so, they, they might offer a mm-hmm. They have their mics on so they can it's, hear. There's so many yeah. things. For advertising, uh-huh. they put things up for you. It's evil design. So you think that you have the choice to do what you want. You don't have the choice. So as you search for something, and you might put in there uh, balls, vacuums, anything. So when you put in vacuums, or you put in balls, or you put in valves, or you put in carpets, everything that's connected to carpets is going to come to you. Vacuums, <laughs> colors, paint, under the ones that lay down the carpet, everything. The computer automatically does it. It's an algorithm. Yeah. Now, algorithm. Now, it's on a massive level. You think that you have the choice. No, you don't have the choice. Nah, you don't have the choice. Nah. And it's very, very dangerous. Nah. So this thing should, uh, it has to, you, it, it comes, the fitting that comes to you in your, in your home. Nah. They have, when, when we were young, they had peer pressure. Peer pressure. I don't know if you're familiar with this word. Peers means that akranic, and they're the same age as you, and you have pressure from them. Be like, why, why are you coming over in my neighborhood? Why are you doing that? And there's some type of, you know, friction and hardship with the people that's on your same age. When you go to school, you have to confront them. When you go to the store, when you're in the classroom, now I'm, so you have to hold your own up. Now, this peer pressure is on the phone. You, you don't even have to see his face. Before you have to see his face, you have to walk past him. It was real pressure. You got to walk past him. He's going to say something to you. You got to walk through the crowd. It's a group of them. You in his neighborhood. But now the peer pressure's on the phone. People might be on it just for messaging. They go. They they have mental problems. They want to commit suicide. Didn't even see the person. You understand what I'm saying? They didn't even see them, but they feel pressured. Some of the, a lot of things that are connected to gangs. What happened between them? Just speech back and forth on the cyber Facebook assault. cyber assault. Yeah. Everything is all cyber. It, 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 you didn't meet him, and you saw that he was a big, intimidating person, and that you would no, you didn't even meet him. You didn't even run into them. You didn't even go to the neighborhood. Before it would be some type of fear to go in another neighborhood, now that you're not from. Today, just getting on the phone, it's pressure, it's fear, uh-uh. and it really affects the young, it affects them, it takes their mind, it takes their psychology. If you, if you look at how many people in the past 20 years ago would get their driver's license when they were 17, 18, 19, 20, nowadays you, you don't find it. Uh-uh. It has paralyzed the people's minds. The phone is in your hand and your mind is the target. Now, to one of them, I heard them say that people now, they lay down to go to bed and they can't until they get their digital pacifier. 
You know what a pacifier is? Yeah. The Yemeni Union called Kadaba. The baby puts it in his mouth and sucks on it. This is your digital pacifier. You put it in your mouth and you suck on it. And this will do the whole night. Because you can't go to sleep. Because your fit or your natural disposition has been altered. So try your best to live without your phone. Turn it off. Turn it off at night. When you feel like you're going to miss that big deal. That big information that's going to set you free. Give you salvation for the rest of your life. It never comes. It never comes. And, it and just keeps you going. Keeps you going. Keeps you going. They even say about this blue light. If you find sometimes that you're sleepy at night. And you're sleepy. You're about to fall asleep. You say, let me go to bed. But you said, let me just check something on your phone. This blue light tricks your intellect that you're awake. Nah. It makes you feel that you're awake. That you're not sleeping anymore. You don't realize what an hour one pass. And then when you go to lay down, now you can't sleep. But originally, you were tired. You were falling asleep. You said, well, let me just check something. Nah. So, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, and I like this hadith because in it is solution. In it is solution for hard times. Because in Sahih Muslim, in this Bukhari, from the hadith of Abi Sa'id al Qudri, radiallahu anhu, an Arabian, qal Rasulullah, akhbirni an al Hijra. An Arabi, and you have to understand what is Arabi, is somebody that doesn't live amongst the people. Naam, it's far away. He doesn't even know the customs of the people. Arabi dakhala wa bala fi ta'ifat al masjid. An Arabi came to the masjid, he urinated in the masjid. He doesn't know, you know, the adab and the customs of the people. He might urinate in the masjid, he might do this. They have some ghilva with them, they have some uh, roughness that's not on purpose. Harsh. Naam. They're a little rigid. Naam. So he asks about hijrah. He asks about migrating to Medina with the Prophet. That was hijrah at that time. What did the Prophet say to him? Wayhak in the sha'n al hijrati la shadid. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Woe upon you! Really, the issue of hijrah and migrating is harsh. This is a strong affair. Fahalaka min ibl. Do you have camels? So yeah, I have camels." Do you give the sadaqa that you have, you know, that, that's upon you to do? He said, yes, I give the sadaqa. Then, then work and do your deeds and practice your deen from behind al-bihar. What does al-bihar Sit down. Ocean? No. <laughs> no. Maman al Bihar. I'm not a Muslim. Al Bihar. I'm not a Muslim. 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 i if you can't make hijra, stay Arabian. Stay Bedouin Arab. Stay far away. Now, you have your able, you could come to Medina sometimes and see me. And you go back over there where you're at. Stay far away from Fitan. Now, in, in, in this verse, Al-Bahar, it means Mudin. When Allah says, Zahara Al-Fasad Fil-Barri Wal-Bahri. The Jamhur of the Ulama said, Bahari means the Mudin. Naam, that the fitting and temptations has appeared in the bar and the bahar. The bahar is not the ocean here. It means the big cities. No. No. In the land. No. In the general. No. In the bar and in, in, on the land and in the cities. And in the Sahara, in the open area. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when this person, Imam An Nawawi, he says, when the Prophet said, Wayhaq, in the Amri Hijr al Shadid, woe upon you, Verdi, the issue of Hijr al Shadid. Imam al we said the Prophet was afraid that he wasn't strong enough for Hijr. 
So if this was in the time of the prophet, what do you think about the time that we live here in America now? Yeah. Uh-huh. You're to get up and make hijra. Okay, can you make hijra and leave your mother? Can you leave your mother? Even if she's not of a Muslim, you, can you just abandon your mother and leave her? Uh-huh. You have to be, all these things you have to take into consideration. And then Shaykh Yahya, Hafizullah Ta'ala, and before him, Shaykh Mukbul, Rahimullah Ta'ala, used to advise people not to make hijrah. Specifically, I'm talking about who? Al Ghuraba. But he said, when you leave, leave the Nija with your knee of what? Talib al Im. O Firaran min al Fitin. Leave with the niyyah that you fling from fitna. Leave with the niyyah that you're seeking ilm. But something might happen. You might have to come back. You might have to come back for all kinds of reasons. Many of these, first of all, is so much turmoil in the Islamic world. So much turmoil. And, and in chaos in the Islamic world, where there's adam istiqrar, and there's a lack of, uh, uh, of uh, consistency and peace in these parts of the world. So you might, uh, somebody might make hijra and be over there and have his visa. Before you know it, they won't renew his visa and because the slightest accusation that sent him right back the way he came from. This has happened to dozens of people. But it's interesting, the prophet is telling them that if you stay and you don't come to where the prophet is, fa'mal, do your deen, min al bihar. And this is what we should try to do. Get far away from the major cities. If you look at the major cities like New York, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Naam, and these major cities in Atlanta, Naam, where crime is in abundance, Naam. When uh, this thing happened uh, last year with uh, Black Lives Matter and Floyd that got killed with the cop that uh, killed him. What's his name? Uh, Derek Chauvin. Derek Chauvin. No, the, the cop. Yeah. No. George Floyd. Uh, George Floyd. There was this big thing against the police, the police, the police, the police. Fire. If you look, just in New York City, how many arrests are made in New York for rape? Do you think it's just one or two? Do you think that we actually need the police? Nah. How many rapes are, are the police call for and are make arrests? How many assaults? Assaults, somebody gets beat. Now, I'm, how many robberies? How many murders? How much crime goes on in these areas that we have? Um, and in these neighborhoods that are... Uh, the, the neighborhoods that are African American neighborhoods, and there's a lot of Muslims there. There's a lot of Muslims there. The crime in it is pushed purposely. Drugs are poured in these areas. From the time of Nixon, the president after Nixon was Carter, then Reagan, Naam, then Clinton and Bush, all of them have what's called a war on drugs. But it's not, it's not a war on drugs. It's a war on the users of drugs. It's, it's not a war on the drugs. They keep pushing, pushing the drugs in and they arrest the ones that use it. Let me ask you a question. Who's more? The sellers or the users? Stupid question, right? No. Right. So it's, if a war on drugs, it's a war on who? Sellers. No, who, who's more? One seller is going to oh, sell to a hundred users. <laughs> One seller is going to sell to numerous of users. So when you say it's a war on drugs, it's a war on the people who use and the people that sell. And these are the ones that are in the prisons. Now, they have gone from the plantations of cotton. And cotton is a plantation, it's a field. Now, where you have to pick cotton. They went from the plantations of cotton where they benefit from the cotton. Slave master. From the plantation of cotton to the plantation of crime. Who's benefiting from the crime? The, the same person is benefiting from what? From the cotton. And it's a plantation. It's a mazra'a lil jara'im. Mazra'a. You want qatr? You want kidnapping? Uh, we want children that get, that get kidnapped and taken. Drugs, murder, stick up. 
what kind of crime are you interested in? We'll, we can show you what we have. We, we have all kinds of crime. Look at the crime that we have. Mm-hmm. What are you interested in? Organ, 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 organ. It's, it's endless. Yeah. None of it goes to our benefit. Nuh-uh. None of it goes to our benefit. We just fill up the prisons. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called it Fa'mal min wura'il bihar Fa inna allaha lan yatiraka min amilika shay'an It's a big statement. Do your deeds from out of the city where really Allah won't decrease from your deeds anything. Meaning if you had made hijrah He would not decrease from your deeds anything if you stay far away from the cities. This is a solution for us here in America. In, um, in, in New York, there's over 800,000 Muslims. 800,000. 10% of that is 8,000. Okay, where's 8,000 people going to go? What, 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 who's going to open up for 8,000? This is just New York City. 8,000, can they go to Egypt? What country is going to open 8,000? 800? If, if 400 went through this, uh, uh, something's going on here. I'm going to stop this right here. Uh-uh. This, this is how many Muslims that we have here in this little city here. There has to be a solution. In fact, do the Muslims here, do they need graveyards? Do they need schools? Do they need uh, hospitals and people that, that have? Do they need a way to be safe from the hellfire? Nah, have it, khalasa. The deen has to be established. It has to be. Has to be. Nah. It has to be a way that we and Muslims we have to have masajid we have to have maqabir we have to have schools we have to have our own areas where we live in ourselves our women have to be protected they can't live in fear when they don't do any times of fitna we have to look at this issue of leaving these major cities as the Prophet indicated. And you'll get the reward. Allah won't decrease from your good deeds anything. You know, if you had made it and came to the Prophet. Because he's asking him about Prophet. Not one. He's asking him about migration, about Hijrah. Nah. And this is what we want to benefit tonight. The fitting that we live in. That the fitna is so strong that people still go for it. And they still go after it. Nah. And the Muslims, they fall into these same problems. The Muslims, in reality, they suffer from everything that the disbelievers <clears throat> suffer from. From everything. Muslims have problems with domestic violence. Muslims have problems with cigarettes, with alcohol, with drugs. Muslims before used to go to prison, become Muslim. Now they go to the prison Muslim. They go in Muslim. Naam. Because of the khalil, because they live with them. Naam. Because of the abundance of fitna. This is what the Prophet is talking about in all these hadith, that the abundance of fitna. Hey, what is the solution? What is the solution? Naam. Now, even if you even if you're trying to be different, when you live amongst it, as uh, Zainab asked the Prophet, Are uh, we going to be destroyed? And amongst us is righteous. God, no, either kathura, khabif. Um, if there's a lot of khabif, meaning fasad, fasuk, wal maasi. So where we're at. It's not possible to stop certain things. It's not possible to start picketing and stopping drugs. The, the ones that are picketing, the ones who want the drugs, it's just a matter of the same amount of the people picketing. Yeah. The ones that have the addiction and want it, uh-uh, they're not going to be out there picketing for them. And so every time you start picketing and stop uh, campaigning for the drugs, this is when they're going to come back and they're going to sell. Uh-huh. If, they, if, a, if a community is infested, you have to get up and you have to go. You have to go. It's just too much. It's too much money. It's too much money. Nah, picketing is not going to stop it. Nah. Years ago, over 20 years, somebody in Brooklyn, they tried to stop drugs. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. Nah. 
So they, they wind up getting killed for trespass. Uh, yes. It's too much money. No. And it comes from the high areas. There was a time, and you all can look this up, but there was something called Iran Contra scandal. The president of America, Reagan, was accused of selling drugs, but Oliver North, who was the general at that time, he took the blame for it. Now, and it all has to do with Nicaragua. There were some people that took over the government in Nicaragua. They took over the government. And the ones that took over government was Taba'an in Russia. They were, you know, connected to Russia. So America didn't want Russia in their backyard in Nicaragua, which is in Central America. So Reagan went to the Congress and said, let's fight to get these people that overthrow the government. Congress said, no. We're not interested in that. So they, from the things that they did, they were selling arms, they were selling guns to Iran. It wasn't principal at that time to sell drugs. The guns and arms and artillery. And they also, they were selling drugs. And this is when the crack era came out. They were selling drugs. The president of America was selling drugs to get money to arm the Contra. It was called the Iran Contra. What does Contra mean? The rebels. You know, these, they're arming people that's going to overthrow, what? Overthrow this government that overtook the government that was there before. Uh-huh. And, it's, it, it, and these are the people, the same people that are saying a war on drugs, and these are the people that are pushing it in. So it's upon the Muslims to be aware of the abundance of fitna from all avenues. Now, um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end, he says, on the shaitan, فَبِمَا أَخْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاتَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And because you have led me astray, I'm going to wait for them on the straight path. ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ عَيْدِيهِ I'm going to come to them from in front of them. وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ And from behind them. وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ And from the right side. وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ And from the left side. وَلَا تَجِدُ أَثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِ And you're not going to find most of them thankful. This is his estimation. وَلَقَدْ صَدَّقَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِبْلِيسُ ظَنَّهُ فَاتَّبَعُهُ إِلَّا فَرِيقًا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And Iblis proved his assumption. وَلَقَدْ صَدَّقَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِبْلِيسُ ظَنَّهُ This is his ظن. وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرُ You're not going to find most of them thankful. I'm going to come to them from in front of them, and from behind them, from their right side, from their left side. And you're not going to find them. thankful to you. Allah says later in Surah Al-Sabah, وَلَقَدْ صَدَّقْ عَلَيْهِمْ إِبْلِيسُ ظَنَّهُ Iblis proved on them his assumption. فَاتَّبَعُهُ إِلَّا فَرِيقًا مِنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ They all followed him except a group of the believers. A group from them. Yeah. So with that, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us, to oh, aid yeah. us. It's not it's sufficient to make uh, dua. We have to make dua, but we have to actually do things together and try to relocate and try to look where we live, where we go to school, and where we send our kids to school, Naam, and how we uh, get our kids get married, and what are their aspirations, and our involvement with them, and where they're at. Where are your children? Where are your children at? Where do they go? Where do they walk? Who are their friends? Who are they talking to on the phone? What about your girls? These things need heavy consideration. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك